I mean, that's a vibe right there. I don't know about you. I mean, I hear some trap stuff on that already. Hey everyone, it's TikTok. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. First off, if you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing if you like this type of content. Also, if you like this video, please let me know in the comments and also please consider pressing that like button as well. Today, we're gonna to talk about Thesis iPad Edition from Sugar Bytes. So this is a port from their desktop application over to the iPad. Uh, it's a MIDI sequencing application that runs standalone, but it also works as an AUV3 uh, plugin and AUV3 host. So you can use this in GarageBand or Beatmaker 3 or Cubasis or any host really on iPad that supports AUV3. So we're gonna get right to it. And as always, keep it booming. All right, so here we have Sugarbyte's thesis this is the iPad edition. So they ported over their desktop application to the iPad. So it's a standalone application. It runs on its own, but it's also an AUV3 application. So you can use it in a host that is in Beatmaker 3, Cubasis, GarageBand, whatever uh, iOS app that hosts AUV3 plugins, you'll be able to use Thesis within it as a MIDI plugin. And, uh, I'll show you Beatmaker 3 and how I actually do that in Beatmaker 3. So let's just look at the standalone app. First off, let's talk about the global section over here. So here we have indicators for MIDI in and MIDI out. There's also a button that'll take you to the online manual for this very helpful. Then we have some options um, to change the octave or transpose the MIDI in data. And then the same for the MIDI out data here. Okay, so you can send data from a, um, a keyboard, a MIDI keyboard, or from other apps. You can also send MIDI out to other apps, or you can send MIDI out to external synths or other devices. So next, um, we have the sequencer settings. So these settings actually apply to these sequencers. So there are a number of sequencers here, and each one affects a different parameter in MIDI. So you can choose to trigger uh, the sequences by pitch keys, which these could be keys on an external MIDI keyboard. Uh, they, they can also be these keys down here, the pitch. Um, and then also you can change that to be the pattern keys, which are over here. So you have several patterns. So you can have not only sequences, but different patterns of sequences. And you can sequence those as well over here in the pattern sequencer. So you can trigger, that is, start your sequences by pattern keys, which are down here. Those are your two options for those. Uh, trigger mode. So you have external as your trigger mode, which means an external host, that is, uh, if you're hosting an AUV3 or you have MIDI clock being sent to Thesis, uh, then that external device will trigger the transport button, which is right here, which is play. You can also choose a note on effect. So um, any note from your MIDI keyboard can trigger the start of a sequence. And that can also apply to these notes down here. Or could you do note toggle? So note toggle means that you hit a note once it starts the sequence and you hit it again and then it uh, turns off the sequence. Then below that we have loop. So for each sequence, you can have an individual loop and each loop can be a different length. So your sequence for pitch does not necessarily have to have the same loop length as for your velocity or your gate time. But you also have the option of a global loop, which means that there's only one loop that rules all of your sequences here. And so all of the sequences will follow this one loop here. So we're going to leave that on individual. Then tempo. So tempo is a way to define the resolution of your steps. So by default, it is 16th note. So you have 16th note steps, but you can change that to any, um, any resolution that you want. So that could be by bar all the way down to 132nd note. And then you have swing, which will give you a little bit of swing in your sequence. And then down here, let's talk about the global tempo. So this tempo affects all of the sequences so that they're all in time and all in sync. Of 
course, you can send MIDI clock to this app or send out MIDI clock from the app to control other applications um, tempo. Okay, so here are your settings. You can adjust your audio settings here. MIDI settings, you can choose your MIDI in and output devices. These could also be software based. Okay. All right, so now let's talk about the different sequencers here. So we have a pitch sequencer here at the top. This affects all of your pitch for your sequence, so you can choose any of the 12 notes in the Western scale. Um, there's also a way to define what your key is. So by tapping and dragging here, you can define what your key is going to be. That is your root note. And we're going to leave it, leave that on C. All right, and so that changes all of your notes here. But you can also change your scale here. All right, uh, let me choose Aeolian here. And here you can change your notes. And of course, all of the notes are only going to be in the scale that you choose here. So for Aeolian, you're only going to see notes that apply to that Aeolian scale here. So in that way, if you know you're in a minor key, you can choose a minor mode. And it doesn't matter what note you choose here, it's always going to be in key, uh, especially if you choose the correct root note here. So with the pitch sequencer, you also can define uh, the range of your loop here by dragging on this guy. You can also move the range itself. And you can randomize the direction. So you can tell it that you want the loop to go forward or backward. Random, which you'll choose each second, each third, or each fourth, which that means it'll skip certain steps. And then there's a way to shift all right, um, there's also this neat feature that you just saw. If I double tap here, it'll zoom in on the GUI and there's a shift option here. So if I press this guy, that's gonna shift all of my notes up. If I press down, it's gonna shift those notes down all together, whatever's in my loop range. And then if I actually put in some notes here, let's zoom back in by hitting right, I can shift all of my notes to the right. And then of course, left shifts all of those notes to the left. Then there's some step input and record options here. So if I use a MIDI keyboard, I can input notes uh, using a MIDI keyboard by step. It's a basic step sequencer. So you hit the first note. Let's just show you that you hit the first note and then it goes to the next and then so on and so forth. You can also do a live mode where you just run the sequencer and as it's going in real time you're going to be entering your MIDI notes there. So let's turn that off. All right let's talk about um, the velocity sequencer. So there's a velocity sequencer. Let me reset each of these. So each sequencer has an X that you can reset uh, any parameters and values in that sequencer. So if we go to the velocity, if I hit play right now, you see that all of the sequences go, but you don't hear anything. All right. Uh, even if I change the notes, you don't hear anything. It isn't until I actually start putting in velocity data that you'll start to hear something. The reason that you hear something is because there is a built-in synth. So if we click here, we're going to access the built-in synth here. These are all your oscillator parameters with your envelope, your ADSR here. Filter options with another envelope. And then some delay, so you can add some delay there. Um, it's pretty cool, actually. There's several presets for it. So, you know, if you don't have, um, if you're not connected to an external synth, or application like that, you can actually use the built-in synth here. So, going back to our velocity sequencer. So now we hear something. And of course, these steps, which are velocity, are going to affect the synth. So if the synth responds to velocity, that is, 
you know, you hear certain changes in the timbre of the synth, uh, de depending on uh, what the velocity is, um, then you're going to hear those changes and you can affect those and, and change the data value of each of these steps, um, uh, you know, in a way that it'll affect the synth uh, in a way that you like. So uh, that's the velocity sequencer. It also has an option to choose the direction here, just like with the pitch sequencer, and then an option to shift. With all of these sequencers, you also have the option of copy and pasting data. So I can hit copy here and then move my loop range and then paste it. And I can keep doing that throughout the sequence for as long as I like. And that works with any of the sequencers here. So that's a kind of a quick way to uh, get data and copy data from one part of your sequence to the next. There's also a global copy paste down here. So you can copy this entire group of sequences and then you'll be able to paste it into another pattern here. So you can have 16 patterns of different sequences and then you can do copy paste here. All right, let's talk about gate time. Gate time is essentially a note duration. So um, we can change the gate time to affect the note and make it longer or shorter. So for instance, let's just listen to this one note. All right, so that's short and then that's long. Okay, so it just kind of starts in the middle as a default. And then so you can do that for any step. But you can also affect the sequence um, gate time globally over here with this slider. So if we play it, we can make all of those notes short or we can make them long. All right, so any synth app, a piece of hardware that responds to note duration or gate time, this, this gate time sequencer is going to affect that. All right. Uh, let's move on to the performance section. So the performance sequencer is actually not one sequencer. It's actually five different sequencers. So we have an octave sequencer. So you can tell it to uh, shift a step up an octave or up two octaves or even down an octave or down two octaves. So for instance, in this case, all right. change this up two octaves all right so you can do that and get creative ideas that way now if you want to clear one of these you just simply tap and press and hold and it's going to clear it uh, the next sequencer that we have is your pitch bend sequencer so we tap here and we have different uh, wave shapes that are going to be the performance of the pitch bend so for instance if we tap that that's going to be a pitch bend up so let's play it All right. You can also have some shakes in there. So that's going to be your pitch bend sequencer. Let's clear that out. Then your next sequencer is your chord sequencer. All right. So your chord sequencer, you can sequence and apply chords to each step. So for instance, let's choose a minor six so it's a minor chord with a sixth in it, to be clear. All right. All right. Um, and there are major chords here as well. So if you look at these, you see major, M-A-J, minor, M-I-N. And all of these are different inversions, okay? And then you see six which is a minor six, and then uh, an augmented six or a major six, you can say, and then your minor seventh, and then your major seventh. So if you want to create a major seventh chord, 
And then ninth chord. So you can have major ninths or minor ninths. And then down here are your other types of chords. So your diminished quintal. So notes and fifths. Uh, you also have chordal. So notes and fourths. Augmented. And then you have CST, which is cluster. And then QNS. I'm not sure what QNS is. Let's play it. All right, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Let's look at the manual. Okay, so the manual doesn't tell me what it is, but it sounds cool. All right, so that's the QNS. So we can actually build chords here. Let's just do this. So that's the chord sequencer there. The next one below that is going to be your rolls. So you can take any step and apply a roll. So it's going to split that step into subdivisions and there are different patterns here that'll give you different effect. So there's one row that keeps the same note, it's, it's top line. Then this is an ascending roll. So you can have four notes in a row that's, that subdivides each step or three or four and it only plays the the last two or even splits it in half okay so different variations of that and this is descending roll okay so let's hear that so this is with a four note uh, split or subdivision of the step and let's do uh, one and two and then let's do a, a descend all right, let's play this. So, of course, this type of thing works better when the tempo is a little slower. Maybe you have a bigger subdivision of your steps. All right. And then moving on, we have a random sequencer. So random sequencer, uh, what that does is it takes each step and you can randomize a particular value. So that could be your pitch, your velocity, your trigger. That could be your gate time, your octave, pitch bin, or even your chords, major or minor, or even your rolls. So you can randomize those. So for instance, let's just clear this guy out. And we're going to do a random pitch there. And we'll do a random pitch here. All right, let's play that. So each time it's a different note. Every time it comes. All right, so it's randomizing that, right? You can also randomize the velocity. Unfortunately, you can't randomize two values on the same step. That would be actually pretty cool. Uh, you can randomize the octave. So choose an octave. All right. So that's pretty cool. And then you can also randomize your modulation tracks. All right. So that leads us into the next sequencer, which is your modulation sequencer. Your modulation sequencer allows you to modulate um, any of the 128 MIDI CC or control change uh, parameters. And they're all listed here uh, in groups of 10. So here are your most common ones are your modulation, uh, breath control maybe, or foot pedal, which is your sustain, uh, main volume. Others include your pan, expression. So those are pretty common. And then you have your general purpose ones and some other undefined ones. So for instance, you may have a synth that you define certain parameters of that synth to be uh, MIDI CC62 since it's undefined by the standard. And so in uh, the modulation sequencer, you would be able to modulate 
uh, MIDI CC62, which controls whatever parameter that's assigned to on your synth. Pretty cool, pretty powerful. Uh, this is an, a really powerful app. It has a lot in it. So, you know, it's going to take a while to kind of break this down for you guys, but hopefully you'll have some stuff that you can take uh, with you and be creative. So let's just continue on. Now, all of these sequencers have a reset option. So we can reset here. This X will reset. Okay. And then also you can randomize. So now it just throws random values in there. If I hit it again, it's this dice looking icon here or die, it's just one. And then I can randomize in any of these sequencers. And the more I press it, it just keeps randomizing. Now there's another option here called mutate, which it'll take what you already have and just kind of change it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, then you have a global randomize. So if you look down here in the sequencer, all right, you can randomize everything, all right? Now my curiosity makes me wonder what this actually sounds like. So we're just gonna play it. And we can choose minimum and maximum values to randomize by hit down here. So that's pretty cool and powerful actually. So we have some modifier options down here. So fine, if we press fine and change a parameter, that's gonna give us a fine control over it versus if I'm not pressing it, then it's more of a course control, okay? Linear, if I press linear, then I can move one parameter, but if I slide over, then I can linearly change all of them at once. Now, if I wanted to change all of these parameters uh, and they keep their relation to each other, then I can choose all and drag, and it changes all of them in relation to each other. So it keeps their relationships. This is great for changing the key up here in your pitch sequencer, okay? And still keep all of the notes relative to each other. So that's great. Then there's a MIDI learn option. I haven't gotten into that, but I'm pretty sure it does what it says. You basically MIDI learn uh, a function on the GUI to a piece of hardware. See, let's talk about these red notes that you see. The red notes are basically locks. When the locks are on, that locks those notes from being changed. And then these X's here, these red X's, those mean that those steps will not sound. So instead of uh, changing the velocity to zero, you simply put an X and it will not play that sequence. It will, it will step to the sequence, but nothing will sound. All right, so now let's talk about the action section. But before we do that, let's just go to a preset real quick. So let's choose this beside me and play it. All right, that's fine. So it's playing an internal synth there. All right, in the action section over here, uh, we have some real-time modifiers. So you, we can change the way these sequences behave uh, just based off of these individual uh, action section buttons. So if we start the sequence, gate time is going to change all of the gate times to be whatever we set here. So we can change the gate time to be short, and now all of them will be short for as long as I press and hold this. And then all of the action buttons here can also be controlled via MIDI, so they're tied to MIDI keys down here. All right. The velocity gate is a way of uh, muting or excluding notes that do not um, exceed a certain threshold. So you can adjust the threshold here and any notes in your sequence that do not go above this threshold will not play. So if we play it, all right, this may be a little tricky. I may have to all right, so some of these notes are not playing now. All right, so that's the velocity gate. The looper is a way of looping a certain number of steps. So we can choose however many steps, all right, that we want here. And when we press looper, it's going to loop those steps, okay? So that could be two steps or so, or it could be longer. 
okay? So that's a way of doing some real-time uh, looping of your steps. And then we have slow down, which slow down is basically like a tape stop. So if we play and we press slow down. All right, so it slows down and then it goes back to the original tempo. And we can adjust that rate here. So this would be a faster rate, I believe. Actually, this is a slower rate. So this would be a slower rate here. So it's gradually slowing down. And then this would be a faster rate. So that it almost immediately slows down, right? And then we have retrigger. So retrigger basically retriggers from the beginning. All right. Uh, half speed. We have half speed, which that just uh, cuts the tempo in half. And then it resumes. Okay. And notice it's keeping an internal clock, so when we resume, it's not continuing the sequence. It's starting back from its global clock, which is pretty cool. So that's kind of a way to uh, real-time perform and make sure everything's still in sync. Then we have manual step. Manual step is a way to step through your sequences, and you can use pitch data or your MIDI controller to do that as well. And then we have mute. So mute does exactly what it says it mutes the sound for as long as you're holding it. And then it continues when you release it. All right. Below that is our pattern sequencer. So like I said, you can have 16 different patterns full of different sequences, and then you can sequence those patterns. So here are three different sequences. So step uh, pattern one, pattern two. Let's see if I can get to pattern three. There we go. All right, and then down here, we can choose which patterns we want to play and when, when we want them to play. So maybe I want two to play again. And then we can also choose how many steps that plays. So if we turn it on, then it changes to two. That's going to go to three, then back to two. All right, so once you build a bunch of sequences that are related, then you can actually sequence those sequences, <laughs> sequence those sequences, or sequence those patterns. Then once you build a bunch of sequences uh, that are related, um, you can set those as patterns and then sequence those patterns down here in the pattern sequencer. All right. Now here's a pretty cool function for a thesis. Um, we are going to turn off the internal synth. All right. So nothing is sounding right now. And what we're going to do is hit this plug icon down here. When we hit the plug icon, now we can actually choose an audio unit extension here, or AUV3, uh, because now Thesis acts as a uh, host for audio units. So we can choose maybe base 808, which just recently came out. And if we tap on it, then we'll see the GUI for it. Now, it may show up like this by default, but you simply drag and it'll give you the entire GUI here. So let me choose one of my presets that I have in here. Let's choose the uh, BBTP load. All right. And then. All right. The other thing I need to do here is I need to make sure that it's going to respond to. Uh gate time. So what I'm going to do is I believe I believe this is it. All right, great. All right, so that's base 808. And what we're going to do, let's just uh, let's just build a new pattern from scratch here. So let's see. Let me go to one of these sequences that are empty here. All right. So let's just start. Um, and I'm going to set a tempo for about 140. I'm going to double time it for a trap style um, 808 sequence. 
And then I'm going to set my tempo to eighth notes. All right, and then let's, uh, we'll stay in the key of C, but I'm going to choose a minor scale, so I'll choose Aeolian. And let's see, let's just play. Let's get the first note in. All right, and then like I said before, we have an option to change the octave for your MIDI out data. All right. Let's lengthen this guy and that as well. All right, cool. And basically I'm choosing the fourth and the fifth, just something easy that I know will work. All right, now if I wanted to elongate these notes, of course I can change the gate here. All right, and then let's go down to our performance sequencer. Um, let's let's randomize the octave on the very last note. Let's see how that does. Of course, we've got to extend this. There we go. All right, and let's see, what else can we do here? Let's, so we can continue to build a sequence in that fashion. All right, uh, I actually made some presets, so let's look at some of these presets that I made. Um, let's try this guy. And we need to be on the correct pattern. change the gate time because we want those notes to be a little long and I probably did this for a for a slower tempo so that seems to make sense right there um, so I guess the the tempo is not saved uh, with the patch but any of these presets and patches um, of course you know you're free to play with the tempo uh, and try different things uh, to get different creative vibes. So now let's uh, let's go to another AUV3. Uh, to dismiss this one or to unload it, we simply tap and press and then it unloads. We press again and we can go to another application. So we'll go to Colossus Piano and let's choose with pad. So this is a piano plugin. Let's clear all of this out or go to a new pattern. All right, so let's play this. All right, let's choose, let's choose a Dorian scale. That's still a minor scale, but a different type. And then let's randomize here. And let's randomize here. All right, short gate time, long gate time. Take this guy up. All right, so, I mean, just playing around with the randomization and just trying different things, you can come up with a lot of creative ideas 
that maybe you normally wouldn't have thought about, you know, so it's a very, very powerful app. So let's go to some of these presets that I created uh, for the piano just to kind of hear what what you could come up with, you know, just give you some ideas here. So here's one. I hope it's in, I don't, I'm not sure if it's in the right tempo, but let's play it. I mean, that's a vibe right there. I don't know about you. I mean, I hear some trap stuff on that already. So basically, we did some chords here, some chordal and some uh, quintal harmonies here. And then we have a minor ninth chord and the minor ninth chord there, but an octave lower. And I didn't change any of the notes here. I mean, it's in the key of D, but I mean, it's here that's really all of your harmonic information is coming from. And then of course your velocity and whatnot. But uh, let's go to another pattern and check it out. All right, let's see what this sounds like. Okay, so we have some rolls going on with the chords. Then some pitch bend happening. So pretty cool. So again, it's giving you a lot of creative options here to manipulate um, MIDI and sequences uh, for your applications, for your sense, for your external devices. Um, I can ex actually, if I unload that guy, I can go here and say, hey, that's the input. Let's go to the output and then say, let's activate that. So now it's going to send to my Roland keyboard uh, this particular sequence. All right. So that's going to go to my keyboard that I have in here. And, you know, very cool, very powerful. So now what I want to show you is how you can use this tool inside of an AUV3 host like Beatmaker and see what we can come up with. So the video started getting long, so I decided to do a part two of this, and that's going to be thesis inside of an AUV3 host, which is going to be Beatmaker 3. So look for that following this video. Again, if you like this content, please like, share, and consider subscribing to the channel. And if you subscribe, make sure you put on post notifications so that you're notified whenever I upload a new video. So that's going to be it for now. Look for the next video of Thesis inside of Beatmaker 3. And as always, y'all, keep it booming.